talk about your open shirt. Oh, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in the script. Had nothing to do with my character. It had nothing to do with the movie. I don't know. It just happened somehow. And Did he muscle you up or something? <laughs> no, no. But I saw the original drawing, and it's entitled Naughty Tusks. Welcome to an exclusive conversation for Vanity Fair. We're going to tell the story of how we made a movie called Jurassic Park 30 years ago. And uh, possibly about how we reunited once again for this movie called Jurassic World Dominion. It's coming out this summer. I think my... <laughs> run from the... The run. Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. <laughs> Yeah. That's my favorite. I think that whole sequence, it was the most fun I had with Steven. He loved choreographing this idea of you're in this circumstance, it's going to be really terrifying, really scary, and then the climax is you succeed, and then you fall back, and then something terrifying happens. <gasps> Mr. Arnold. No, it's such a relief, but oh my God, it's the worst, oh, most horrific thing ever. And then you throw yourself back, but then you know you're gonna be okay, you're gonna make it another. <laughs> and then you run a little bit more, then you slam it shut, and I want you to cry hysterically, cry, scream, let it, people don't, yes. they're not heroic in yes. these moments. And then you're gonna run, run as fast as you ever have, like a marathon. We're training you for eight weeks, and then suddenly we did the whole thing in like one master, but, on the first take. Oh, I, am I hearing laughter? Have I gone crazy? No, maybe it's just you needing to be in the moment that's gonna be so sad. No, you're really hearing laughter. Laura, you're hearing people laughing hysterically. And suddenly, <laughs> I look back, and my wire of my flashlight has been dragging all the various limbs of Sam Jackson's <laughs> character as I'm traveling. Oh so I have like eight body parts oh, as I go through more than, there was more than the arm that props had put there just in case he wanted to see more. And a hundred people were howling, but I was so focused <laughs> getting it right. I've never and heard that before. I think oh, Steven so has it, but I've never seen it. But oh my God, we had so much fun. No one really understood what we were up to. Just Steven Spielberg was making a movie and it might have something to do with yeah, dinosaurs. Okay. And then it was like, oh, it's based on the Michael Crichton book. I hadn't read the script. I'd read the, you know, they said, here's got a meeting. They're thinking about you for this part. I'd read the book, came into the meeting, and then he said, hey, you know, your part is going to disappear. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen to this. So sorry about that. And I think I said, ho, 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 wait, okay, uh, may, but, uh, but think of this, uh, don't, don't do that without, uh, and I think I you know, said something, having no impact on the final decision, but luckily it did coincide with somehow the part getting in, in there. You were so prepared. Well, I'm, I'm nothing if not conscious. You were so prepared. The most you were, prepared you were, you were, you were buffed, actor ever. You were buffed, you had your costume with you, you knew how every line was going to be said. Oh my God. Well, I don't know about I was, that. Jeff, I was impressed. I'd never seen anything like this. Really? I know. Oh, Me thank too. you. I get a lot of flack to this day. Sam Neill's American accent in Jurassic Park was a load of T Rex poo. <laughs> They're moving in herds. They do move in herds. On day one, and, and it was the day we fried the kennel on the electric fence. <laughs> <laughs> the day we fried the kid. <laughs> yeah. You wonder why he cast <laughs> Sam Neill to play this role. It's <laughs> so you. Uh, anyway, he came up to me halfway through the, through the day and he said, hey, Sam, you know the accent we, we were talking about? I said, yeah, I've been working on it for four weeks or something. He said, don't worry about it, just use your own voice. I said, that's great, Stephen, thank you so much. And then four days later, he came up to me and said, you know that voice you're using now? I said, yeah, my, my, my voice. He said, somewhere in between. <laughs> God. He definitely worked with both of us on the relationship. Yeah. And he was very specific about it. We were in different places in our lives and he was never gonna settle down. She was a serious scientist who also was going to want a commitment and a life that wasn't just at a dig site. You know, I think his trying to figure out how we do that also given that we wanted the character to be somewhat of a feminist within 
this rather male-dominated construct of the action movie and adding dialogue that supported her being a badass feminist and you know and so that mm. was important to me and to Steven so those were our conversations which I really appreciated mm -hmm. we didn't rehearse everything was in the moment he loved us trying things mm. he loves making movies in such a delicious oh, way so, right that enthusiasm we, yeah we were never not able to improvise or come up with a funny line I remember being incapable of imagining how it would work and be spectacular. But the big breakthrough of CGI was made where now they, it, Kathy Kenny describes a meeting where Stephen had said, hey, I need these dinosaurs that are running, mm -hmm. running. She went, okay, well, let me see. And she talked to amusement park people. And she said, Stephen, I, that's not going to work. We don't have that. Dennis Murr was fooling around with these things and said, hey, after some time, come to my, I think I've found something here that might interest you. At ILM. At ILM showed yeah. them something on a computer, from what I gather. The two of them, I think Kathy, and Stephen yeah. leapt to their feet when they saw this and said, Eureka, you know, whatever, you know. One of the guys there, they had the Vista vision and they were going to get the image of us seeing the Brachiosaurus for the first time. We're all in the Jeep. They'd put an X on a piece of paper up in the tree where it was going to sort of eat a leaf. And we all, on the first shot, looked, you know, in awe at it. And someone came running over, no, 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 no. no. It's going to be so vast. And it was like, Jerry, Jerry, run as though you're the back of the dinosaur all the way to so we could get the scope of how big it would be. And we were like, oh, my God, Jerry, it's all the way back <laughs> and his whole body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got all that room. So when you guys see it, you can really take it all in. We're like, all right, whatever. Yeah. I don't know if this is going to come together, but OK. CGI will never entirely replace the human being because it's the actors that make this stuff real at, at the end of the day, don't you think? At this point, cut, note to editor, cut to the CGI version of Sam continuing the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I say finally, <laughs> never will human being. <laughs> bigger, why do they always have to go bigger? We shot this under COVID conditions. We were, at one point, I think the only production that was actually turning over in the world. And we were all in a hotel together in a remote part of England. And this is all we knew, <laughs> just each other. Shortly before we gathered, we had a, you know, a choice to live kind of separately in different housing mm. around the area, Pinewood Studios. And uh, then on one call, I think we all had a confab, and he yeah. said, well, here's my vote. I'm not going to make you do anything, but we have this hotel nearby where we could all take it over yeah. and just be there. And I think we could get say, enjoy that, and it might be very safe. And on weekends, on off days, we could kind of keep rehearsing and developing things. What's so incredible is that we all know that feeling from childhood of imagining what we always long to see. I mean, the dinosaur being a huge part of most children's lives. And so I think for all of us to bring whatever it is for us as actors, that childlike, desperate longing for your dream to come true. Yeah, and if there's any evidence of, uh, for me, it's this right now. It's this moment right now. Here we are, in, in, entangled with each other in a d delightful way right now with you and doing this. Yeah. I, I find that very magical and how great, you know. Thank you, Vanity Fair. Thank you, Vanity Fair. Thank you, Vanity Fair. You are, and Vanity, you are fair and vain somewhat. <laughs> <laughs>